Coral reefs are the most biodiverse marine ecosystems on the planet and they depend on a functional symbiosis between algae and a coral host. So these photosynthetic algae provide energy to the host and get inorganic nutrients and shelter in return. To establish this symbiosis, most corals produce non-symbiotic larvae that actually have to acquire the symbionts anew each generation from the environment. They do so by phagocytosing the symbionts into the endodermal cells where they then reside to coordinate the cellular functions, such as, for example, the metabolic exchange. And these fundamental aspects of symbiosis establishment, such as the acquisition and integration of symbionts and the metabolic dependence, they actually depend on very classical cell biological phenomena, such as cell-cell contact and communication, phagocytosis and molecular transport. The transfer of nutrients is actually essential to the whole ecosystem because they, they thrive in, a, in an otherwise very nutrient poor environment. And if this is disturbed by a phenomenon that's commonly known, known coral bleaching, the whole ecosystem may actually die. And therefore I like to argue that the rise and the fall of coral reefs is actually a cell biological problem. In my lab we are interested in answering questions such as which cells acquire symbionts, we would like to know which molecules are involved, what are the cellular dynamics of these processes. We are also interested in figuring out how key nutrients are transferred, how they affect the host and what's the composition of the symbiosome which is the organelle in which the symbionts reside inside the host cell. So you may, may wonder now why do we not yet know anything about these actually pretty basic question. It is because corals suck as laboratory systems. <laughs> they are actually endangered, they are grow very slowly, they are very hard to keep in the lab and they also have this cultural skeleton which makes it really difficult to extract it or put it under the scope. And another important point is that they actually only reproduce once a year, severely limiting access to larvae for your experimentation. So what we're doing in the lab is we use a model system, it's Aptasia, it's a small tropical marine sea anemone which lives with the same types of symbionts as corals do. The clonal lines grow like a pest and they have very fast generation times and luckily they lack the calcareous skeleton. Another very important aspect is also that Aptasia also establishes symbiosis during larval stages. This all sounds Great. However, before we can actually now start answering our questions, we had to develop all sorts of tools and techniques. So by now we, we participated in the genome sequence for Optasia. We have a robust spawning induction protocol that provides us with unlimited access to larvae. We can micro-inject those for functional approaches. We know by now exactly when and where symbionts are taken up into the endoderm. We have techniques to analyze gene expression or, or microscopy at the organismal and cellular level to analyze the symbiosis. We also do some comparative field work to, to um, reintegrate our, uh, our results to the, to the real thing. And importantly, we also have a transcriptome that identified symbiosis-specific genes. So for now, it's the first time that we can actually start a hypothesis-driven analysis of the whole process. So, for example, we hypothesize that the, the endoderm of these larvae, that they have special cells that acquire the symbionts via, uh, via receptor-mediated phagocytosis. And after the integration of these symbionts, we think that the cellular organization of the host cell as well as of the surrounding tissue changes. We are going to take an unbiased approach to figure out whether this is actually true by, by using, for example, single cell transcriptomics, but we also do just classical cell biology, analyzing the function of the candidate genes and also live imaging. In the end, what we actually expect is that we will create a mechanistic understanding of the, the coral algae symbiosis itself, which hopefully also has some impact on understanding coral reef health in the end. And we also plan to kind of integrate the results that we get to, to related processes such as, for example, food phagocytosis or intracellular pathogenesis, which will then allow us to better understand the evolution of, for example, phagocytosis or the innate immunity. And 
More broadly speaking, we hope to better understand how these two cells, very different cells from different organisms, actually come together to form this extremely successful symbiosis that actually thrives the whole ecosystem. And yeah, I'd like to thank these are the people in the lab and the funding.